my second guest on my holiday special is the I'm sure the longest running Alphaba in the history of Wicked, and she has worked with the Wicked legend herself, Adina Menzel. My second guest is Miss Jackie Burns. Hi, Jackie. Hi. How are you? I'm doing wonderful. How are you? Good. I'm good. So before we get into the spirit of the holidays, which is like everyone's favorite time of the year, besides when it's sunny and 75 degrees outside. So true. <laughs> I have a couple questions for you about Broadway and stuff, and then we'll go right into the deeps of the holidays. Okay. I'm excited. So in what ways does Jackie Burns connect to Alphaba? Uh, I, I, I wear my heart on my sleeve, um, like Alphaba. Um, once... There is no filter with me. What you see is what you get. And you never have to worry about what I'm thinking because I'm going to tell you, just like Alphaba. Mm -hmm. um, I think those are like the two main things that we share in common. Do you think Alf the Alphaba energy, because you've done it on tour and on Broadway, so do you uh, think your Alphaba energy is different between touring and Broadway, or do you think it's sort of the same? You know, it's so funny. What I think is so beautiful and amazing amazing about theater and live theater and what I miss so so much is the instantaneous connection with the audience and they are their own character in their own right mm -hmm. and you feed off each other so I think that every show is different whether touring or on Broadway because every audience is different so every night is different wherever you are I do have to say I have noticed that um, Broadway audiences sometimes can be a little bit more reserved than touring audiences because they usually are used to, like, you know, they either are tourists that came to New York specifically to see Broadway or they're New Yorkers that, you know, have Broadway at their disposal. Mm -hmm. So they, it's not as like, oh my God, Wicked came into town for, you know, one month out of every, you know, four years. So the excitement, because it's at your fingertips all the time, sometimes yeah. I feel like is less um, electrified as on tour. It's not that they're any less appreciative. It's just a different energy. So yeah. sometimes you can feel like the end of Defying Gravity on tour, like you finish and it's like your Lady Gaga, like the, the crowd just like erupts. And then when you go to Broadway, it's like, it's still wonderful, but it's not that same like, oh my God, I've never seen this before, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. When I saw the show for the first time, instead of erupting during at the end of Defying Gravity, I just was this. Yeah, that's another thing where you just like, God, stop. Yeah, it's like, oh my God. Wicked was my first Broadway musical. It was? Mm -hmm. I was 13. And who were you, witches? Kara and Caroline. Oh, that's a that's an amazing duo right there. Yes, Kara and Caroline were my mm -hmm. first set of witches, and they're and I've met them both, and they're fantastic human beings. They're the best human beings. Getting to have done, I've done it with both of them. Caroline and I did it together on Broadway, and Kara and I did it together in LA. And, and it, yeah, they're amazing human beings. I love them both. I love them both dearly. Yes. When I first met Caroline Bowman for the first time, I fangirled. Well, how could you not? I don't know. I felt like such an idiot for fangirling. Why? Because I have never fan, I never really had a whole fangirl moment until what? before in my life. What does a fangirl moment consist of to you? I'm just curious. Like, be like, oh my God, like, you know, just like, you know, being like a typical, like if a teenager were to, you know, go crazy over a celebrity. And I bet she loved it. Anytime somebody's like, oh my God, I'm so sorry I fangirled over you. I'm like, why are you apologizing? It makes me feel amazing. What, like people are like, do you think it's annoying? It's like, why would I ever get mad at the end of my workday? People stand up and applaud for me and want my autograph and tell me how much they, they, they love. Like, I think it's the, we're so lucky. Mm -hmm. have somebody love us yeah and I told I interviewed Desi Oakley about a month ago and I told her that I fangirled over Caroline Bowman uh because they're best friends and she's like uh, that she thought it was hilarious you kind of remind you have a Desi Oakley kind of look to me have really you ever, yeah you remind me you have her like essence oh my know. god thanks I'll have to I take that as a compliment and I'll have to <laughs> GM her on Instagram and tell oh, her I think she's stunningly beautiful she's awesome yeah. such yeah. a nice person Oh my, so nice. So would you as Jackie want to be friends with Alphaba if you were a student at Shiz? Oh, heck yes. Yes, with a capital Y, yeah. 
Yes. Would I you want to be her roommate? Why not? Yeah. That'd be so cool being roommates with someone like Alphaba. Oh my God. Yeah. She's genius. Oh, she's legendary. Yeah. Like I get to live with her. Sweet. <laughs> not like Glinda. Who's like, I'm going to make you pretty and a princess. <laughs> But it's so sweet because in her own way, that's like her love language. Yeah. You know? So it's like actually really sweet and lovely. When you think about it, it's all changing. I think what's so great about acting is like realizing that you have to get into the perspective of that character where like you and I would be like, oh my God, you're trying to make her different and like love her for who she is. That's our perspective. Her perspective is that that is her love language. That's like her being like, I want, I want to love you, you know? Yeah, totally. So what was it like not being green on a Broadway stage when you did If Then? <laughs> it was lovely. <laughs> it was really nice to just like leave the theater without that green halo. Oh, yeah. And, and without having green zits. And, you know, um, although it was really funny, I had a hard time doing my, I'm not really good at, with makeup in general because I just don't wear a lot of makeup. And so especially after playing Alphaba for so long, I just really got out of the habit of wearing makeup because you just end up wearing sweatpants and not caring. And the last thing you want on your face is makeup, you know? You want your face breathe. Yeah, you're like, please. Um, so I, I was very stressed out to do my own makeup because I hadn't done it in so long and I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> yeah, I remember I asked Dee Rossioli the question of what's it like being, what was it like being not green on a Broadway stage? She said it, the first night when she did Fiddler, it was the weirdest thing because she looked at her hands and they weren't green. Yeah, but that, that's so funny because she had to wear some really crazy makeup for Fiddler too. So it's not like she was like donning like a fresh face. She was still giving you like crazy alpha, like alphabet-esque makeup. Yeah. You know? Oh, totally. Yeah. So you have sort of uh, done a lot of Adina Menzel related things. So I'm sure you've met her a few times, right? Well, yeah, I stood by for her on Broadway. So what is it like? What was she like? Like as a person? Is she like cool? She's very cool. It was weird. It's because people, um, it was very like, again, like the same thing for you with Caroline Bowman. Like I, when I first saw Wicked, it was with her. And um, so and I had just graduated college and, you know, it was like seeing this woman do these roles that I have always wanted to do. And, um, so it was very crazy that all of a sudden then be standing by for her. And so the first day that I walked into rehearsal, um, I was there before she was, and then she came in and they had already been in rehearsal for two weeks. Cause I wasn't in the show. I just stood by for her. So like they had me come in a little later. And the second she walked in, she like immediately saw me and was like, oh my God, hi, how are you? And gave me a big hug and was like, and she's very, very, she's very gracious, very sweet. But it was weird because I didn't get as much time with her as normal people, everyone else in the cast, because I wasn't in the show. Yeah. And if I was in the show, it was because I was playing her role and she wasn't there. Right. So I didn't get to like interact as much as everyone else, but she was always so gracious and lovely. Yeah. Do you know Ryan Redman? Were you in it with Ryan Redman? Yeah. Yeah, I, ta I just uh, talked to her not that long ago. She's yeah, she's hilarious. She's the best. Yeah, we love Ryan. Um, so the holidays. We got to talk about the holiday season because yes. tis the season. Uh, what do you love most about the holidays? I Christmas is my favorite holiday. And maybe it's because my lo love language is gifts. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> But I love, I love presents and I love giving presents and I love shopping for other people and like getting excited about like, oh my God, I think I got the most amazing gift. And, and, um, I also just love, I hate the cold, like more than life itself. Yes. Like if it were up to me, Broadway would be on a beach. <laughs> yeah. Sadly, it is not. So it gives you something to like look forward to and and bring you like happiness in the freezing cold frigid weather you know it like it lights an inner fire you know yeah like, and I wish I had known a holiday I would have taken off my co my COVID uniform tie-dyed uniform and put on my Christmas sweater so imagine this is a Christmas sweater with like oh totally I may put a little graphic or something right there just saying oh, yeah. Um, on a scale from one to 10, one being not festive at all and 10 being over the top festive, how festive are you? Five. Really? 
my mom's super festive. So like, I mean, my mom like has already started listening to Christmas carols and I can't, I can't do that yet. I can do that after Thanksgiving. Yeah. So like, I think I'm like a normal festiveness, like, you know, where I think anything over a five is like somebody who is listening to Christmas music before that Thanksgiving. And I can't do that yet. But I do have to say I'm obsessed with Christmas ornaments. And every time before when we used to get to travel, I always would get Christmas ornaments from every place that I traveled. And That's so cool. So you have them from like different cities and stuff like while you're like touring. Yes. I That's like cool. That. That's yeah. like, it's like a little time capsule or a time, like a yeah. capsule of like where you've been and what you've done. So maybe I'm a sex. Yeah. <laughs> what are some of your favorite holiday songs? Oh God. Um, I love, um, uh, I never, I never know titles of songs. I can only just hear them, but, um, I love, well, I love Silent Night cause it's just so pretty. Yeah. Um, but I love, um, what's the, why see now that you've put me on the spot, I can't, oh, um, what uh, what's it called? Jack Frost sniffing at in what is it? You know, oh God, what is it? Um, I don't know. Many, many years, Merry Christmas. You know, Merry Christmas. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Merry Christmas. Yeah. I love that song, even though you wouldn't know I loved it because I can't remember. It's also early. I just like woke up, so like I don't remember things. Yeah, I had to interview someone from across the pond in England, so I've been up. Uh, from oh the wow. What has been your favorite gift you've ever received during the holidays? Oh my God, I have no idea. I don't know. I don't think I've ever gotten, I mean like I love anything. I'm just so excited to open stuff. Just the act of opening is the so fun. The adrenaline when it comes to give me the yeah. beer, rip it up. Yeah, it's like so exciting. And you know what? Also, my mom's really good at stockings. Like oh. we have major stockings and um, I get really excited for the stockings because most stockings you think are like normally like, you know, like not so cool, right? Like you get like socks or, you know, like they're just kind of like, or Tic Tacs or, you know, like just like they're like kind of like yeah. stuff stuffers. Not in my house. Like you'll get like amazing jewelry in your stocking. Like it's so the stockings are very exciting. I'm always like, Ooh, stocking. Uh, they, uh, Katie in uh, West End told me that instead of, her family does pillowcases instead of stockings. Oh, that's fun. Why wow, you get a real lot of stuff. Oh yeah. It's a lot of presents. Like that's, co that's cool. And that's very creative. Yeah. Uh, do you have any cool family traditions that you have during the, for the holidays? Do any cool family traditions? Um, I think the stocking thing is like the most, the coolest thing because most people don't have like fancy stockings. We have fancy stockings. Um, the other thing is, is that I'm funny in the fact that our tradition is I always like to count everyone's presents. And if anybody got, like if my brother got more presents than me, I like to give my parents shit about it. <laughs> Like, I'll be like, he had 21 and I only had 19. And my mom will be like, that's because your jeans cost more than all of his presents combined. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I'll be like, oh, fine. But I just like, it's the running gag that I'm always like counting everybody's presents. <laughs> oh, yeah. So describe your 2020 in one word and then describe what you hope your 2021 will be in one word. Can it be two words? Yeah. Um, early retirement <laughs> and what do I hope it'll be your 2021 yeah oh um booming I like that yeah perfect so well this has been the longest running alpha blah of all time this Jackie Burns yay <laughs>